Hi, Mike Weaver, one of the product owners here at Quadratech. I'm here with Tony Redman. Hello, Mike. It's great to be here. So today we had in the keynote a lot of new announcements and topics. Why don't we talk about some of the four that come to mind? Let's talk about Outlook, Teams, SharePoint, and Exchange. I suppose Outlook and Exchange are close together. Why don't we talk about Outlook first? What comes to mind on the keynote from this morning? So the biggest thing that Outlook had was this thing called Play My Mails, which is uh, an Outlook for iOS. And what that does is allows you to use Cortana to play back your email. And also it's got a little bit of intelligence built into the Microsoft Graph, which allows you to uh, allows Outlook to figure out who your manager is, for example. So if somebody sends a very important email to you, say, hey, you got a, an email for your manager, would you like me to read that first? Oh, really? It just, yeah, it was kind of interesting. Excellent. Now, the only thing about it is because it's based on Cortana, uh, it's only available in the US and it's only available in English. So people on the other side of the channel who might speak English the correct way won't get it for a while. But so, you know, into every life a little rain must fall. In terms of exchange, I think the big thing that's coming out, uh, we're getting a redesign of the Exchange Administration Center, which brings it into the 21st century kicking and screaming, so that's nice. <laughs> we also have a, a new set of Exchange commandless, PowerShell. You know, Exchange Power was the first major Microsoft product to use PowerShell, going back to 2007. 2010, we had the remote PowerShell came in. And those uh, old commandlets are really suffering in the world of the cloud where the number, of, you know, you've got 200,000 mailbox servers, you've got an enormous amount of processing going on. And so what they've done is they've rewritten all those uh, PowerShell commandlets with a REST-based API. So you get retries, you get robustness, you get resilience, and they're much faster. So that's pretty good. And we're really even looking to those features, particularly in the migration oh, business. Yeah. I, just totally. all the work that we've had to do in PowerShell over the years, it just hasn't scaled. So we're really excited to see yeah. those enhancements. I think another thing too that uh, about exchanges, they've actually solved the message recall problem. Which is huge. Which is huge. Now the thing about it is, message recall in an on-prem environment works by you know sending out this hopeful request to say, you know what, if this message hasn't got off the server, could you take it back? And that just doesn't work with the speed of servers today. Yeah. So what's going to happen now is that we'll have a, a, an Outlook message recall service. And if you need to recall a message because you've sent you know, a message to your boss saying, you, you daft twit, I resign, something like that, what, can, what, what Outlook will do for you is it will reach out and it will insert a special message into the mailbox of your manager, in effect to replace what you've sent with some bland thing saying, oh, Mike recalled your message. So, so similar to Teams, the deleted piece, where the, yeah. when you delete a message, similar activity. Similar activity. Great. So that's basically what happened with uh, Exchange and Outlook. In terms of SharePoint, I think the big thing is that SharePoint has announced, SharePoint Online has gone to 100 million monthly wow. active users, which is 50% of the Office 365 total. So that's pretty big. I think uh, there's a lot of really small changes in, in SharePoint, but the big, big one I found was the launch of this thing called Project Cortex. Now, Microsoft had been down this road before because you know what? In Ignite 2015, they announced an, uh, a knowledge management portal, which was supposed to be the best thing since sliced bread. About six months later, they canned that, and we got Delve instead, or Delve was another right. one. But the point is that over the last four years, there's been a lot of uh, changes in AI. There's been a lot more compute power available. And Microsoft has accumulated a lot more data in the graph. So they're using that in Project Cortex to really highlight important information through uh, a taxonomy uh, known as uh, topic cards, which will surface things like acronyms and connect you with people and stuff like that. It's early days yet. We're not going to see it for at least six months. Okay. But, you know, it's interesting to say the least. Ignite 2020, we'll see what it brings. Ignite 2020, yeah, definitely. There are a lot of practical 365 articles, maybe around the March time frame. And then uh, the last thing is Teams. And the big thing in Teams, your private channels, that's already been covered in another thing. But I will say one other thing that they've slipped in there, which is multi-windows. Multi-windows uh. for private chats and meetings. And that's there, that will become very soon. Particularly so that's, meetings, that's a huge improvement. It is a huge improvement. So that's what I picked up from the keynote. Great. Well, thanks, Tony, for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your Ignite.